So it's felt like it's been forever since we knew a Flash movie was coming, and after delays, controversy, and severe leaks, the movie has finally hit theatres. As a big Man of Steel fan and a DC fan, I've been waiting to see what they've done with this rumoured final film in the current DCEU, or one that is said to be the main resetting event for the DC universe as we know it. And as a whole, while The Flash was an entertaining and fun ride, with moments of sincere emotion emotional storytelling, it's also a film that is very messy. In this review, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on why I believe The Flash is a satisfying mess, discussing how great moments are overshadowed by not so great approaches to comic book filmmaking. There will be very brief spoilers in this video, so if you haven't seen the film yet, then I'd recommend watching it before checking out my review. Before I get into it though, if you want to see more videos on upcoming theatrical releases like The Flash Movie, including my breakdown of the film's ending which is coming tomorrow, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. But without further ado, let's dive into my review for The Flash. So the Flash film directed by Andy Muschietti and starring Ezra Miller, Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton and Sasha Cow is probably one of the most mixed bags of a superhero film that I've seen in a while, containing moments that are truly thoughtful and emotionally compelling, while also having moments that are outrageous all at the same time. It feels like a bad mix of filmmaker driven and studio driven content where the former promises something great and the latter tries to enforce all the wrong things. All in the same movie, we got some good VFX on display, yet also some of the absolute worst. And just like with that aspect, the sincerity of the performances and heights of the storytelling also feel like a missed opportunity too. The idea of hitting the reset button with a story based on time, alternate realities, and whether canon events can be changed is something that on the surface is appealing, as it has been with other superhero movies like No Way Home and Across the Spider-Verse, and the very notion of warning us against multiversal actions is what the movie itself does on multiple occasions, making that concept muddled in the case of The Flash. Now, I don't want this to sound too negative because, as a whole, I did like the film. There's a real thoughtfulness to moments of it, and especially in the stuff we get surrounding the two Barry Allens, their parents, and the integral emotion that underlines their story. There's also a lot of fun to be had here, especially in some of the multiversal aspects and even say Michael Keaton's Batman. But while it's satisfying in those regards, there's also a lot of instability in the way it's handled and with a mishandling of nostalgia in the back parts of the film, the whole project feels like a bad cocktail of genres, whether it be a slapstick comedy, a family drama, a conventional superhero action film, or being a sci-fi. The great superhero films have a tone that they mostly stick to and explore extensively, and The Flash just ends up being a film that throws it all at the wall and hopes that some of it will stick. So Andy Muschietti's film from a script by Christina Hodson deserves praise for at least taking its ideas and character tragedy seriously. With the heavy presence of Back to the Future, we learn that Barry makes a decision to go back in time and change one thing on the day his family was ripped apart. His mum sent his dad to the shop and while gone, Barry eventually finds his mum dying on the kitchen floor. In the present and after a quite shaky opening, he decides to use his powers to return to that very day and add a can of tomatoes to his mum's basket so that he can save both parents. If you've seen other time travel films or even know of the development of those stories over the years, you'll know that things shouldn't be that simple when it comes to course correcting an event. And while this is a simplification that the movie builds on, at least it does have a compelling edge through the emotional undertakings. We also get a nice exchange between Ed 
Ezra's main flash in Ben Affleck's Batman in the earlier moments of the film, touching on the idea of being haunted by the past. Bruce gives him a mature speech about having to live with it and that some things just can't be changed. And while the opening action sequences aren't the greatest in a comic book film by any means, it does hinge on this very idea and the speech between them is mainly a solid moment for the film to build on. From here, we then start to get a good essence of Miller's character and what he truly feels and is hoping for. When he goes back to the past, or what we learn is an alternate timeline, he doesn't just meet another version of himself, but befriends and essentially mentors the other Barry, leading to a process of self-discovery. He's ultimately lonely and missing a sense of friendship or love, and the film does a great job of touching on those integral character points by letting him mature. To build on this positive, I have to say that The Flash is probably one of the best results for a case of the main performer acting alongside himself, something that I didn't expect having seen what we saw in the early footage or trailers. Miller does a good job in his performance of portraying both incarnations of the character, and it will likely make you forget that this is the same actor, seeing them as different people. And when it comes to the return of Michael Keaton from the 1980s Tim Burton films, we get a more rugged down version of that character, appearing more quieter than he did previously. He reacts to situations in ways that differ from the more eccentric flashes, and that does provide a sense of balance. Furthermore, Sasha Cow's Supergirl is great in the moment she's in, but I have to say, her and all of the Man of Steel related stuff did feel like it was only used as a plot device, more than actual fleshed out characters or storytelling points. I thought the actress actually brought the best she could with what she was given, and I did like the essence that she conveyed in honour of, say, Henry Cavill's portrayal. I do think it was a missed opportunity to do an alternate version of Cavill in the film too, and having a appearances from other characters throughout makes me feel even more disappointed that he couldn't at least be included for something. But as a whole, when it comes to performances and the main beats of the story, The Flash does a decent job of setting the table. Now, it's not a secret that this film is changing the events of canon to reset its universe for the future, and while some of the results are understandable, there's a lot that feels underwhelming and also quite pandering. After teasing what could have been a great final sequence with a bit more work, it gives us nostalgia on a level that's almost insulting. And it's not the conflicting tone that emphasises this, it's the baffling VFX work, where in both the final battle scene and cameo moments, it feels like characters are a part of a video game cutscene or have a weird comparison to 2002's The Scorpion King. It's a shame because in parts of the final battle, it actually is really effective narratively as both Barrys have disagreements on whether their travelling actions will help solve issues or create new ones. And The Flash does give us a quite hopeful ending without nullifying its time-related issues throughout. But the presentation of this and its multiverse related occurrences on screen are something that really takes you out of the compelling nature that the film often presents. And seeing how they use fan callbacks to other versions of characters from the DC landscape, it's done with no other purpose but to get people pointing at the screen. And rather than do this and connect it in a powerful way, one that's artistically and visually pleasing, or reusing a library of great footage, they choose to give us waxwork recreations of actors who died years ago, and they've scanned them into horrible looking CG models. I get that studios want to have credit for these highly respected figures returning, but seeing them in this state feels completely grotesque and wrong. It reminds you of those recreations used in, say, Rogue One or The Mandalorian, except here it looks exceedingly worse and disrespectful. I get that they likely asked for this permission and got it, but if you're going to do it, at least to give the respect that these performances deserve and do it correctly. Here, it's done in an excessive manner that just looks and feels completely unnecessary. I will say that the final act still has plenty of great moments, it's just hard to get over the fact that this feels really studio enforced, and when you see stuff that looks as bad as this does, it does disrupt what works well. 
Overall, The Flash zooms through a packed story with a lot of energy and enjoyable moments. But during its climactic end, it comes to a stop with the bad conventions of the genre, whether that's through nostalgia or visual filmmaking. On one side of things, I praise the writer Christina Hodson for telling an origin story with plenty of emotional beats, even after seeing the main character in multiple films previously. But on the other side of things, that genuine sincerity is watered down by all the cookie cutter conventions and cameos the studios in the comic book game seem to constantly turn to in an effort to just please the audience and gain more profitability. The most important thing when it comes to pleasing the audience is telling a good story with good characters, delivering on the plot and narrative questions in satisfying ways, and capturing that using competent filmmaking. And that's what makes The Flash even more confusing, because it actually does tell its story well in specific parts, but at the same time, it still panders to the conventions of the genre, and in turn, underplays the greater effect that it could have had. I must say though, despite all of the noise narratively and visually, it does brilliantly communicate Barry's desire for friendship and the happiness of his younger years. It's what keeps it from completely falling off a cliff, and it does make for partially compelling viewing. It's sad that while Barry grapples with the ethics of his actions to get what he wants, the movie is also blind to the fact that its easter eggs and cameos are doing that exact thing by filling our screens with nostalgia and giving us a weightless sense of joy that we once had. And that joy of the past was mostly filmed and put together better than it is here. It's hugely disappointing because as a whole, when The Flash does deliver on its own merits, it does so really well. But in the end, it's just another case of a comic book movie that puts effort into raising interesting topics and yet it doesn't quite know how to pull it off or do so in an original way. But they were my thoughts on the Flash movie. Of course, from the perspective of being a DC fan, the visions of the various iterations of DC superheroes are on the surface an exciting thing to see, and moments do indeed get the occasional laughs. But like I said, I think going a different route rather than with the conventional comic book nostalgia approach would have been more effective and charming overall. And that extends to a lot of the bad in the Flash, overshadowing great storytelling beats with stuff that cheapens the lasting quality of the film itself. It's not a movie with many new ideas or a rethinking of the genre as early reactions were claiming, and it's not the most intellectual film when it comes to the sci-fi or time-related elements on display. It's a fun superhero movie with real parts of sincerity that ultimately become lightweight to the point where it just feels weightless. Sincere emotion shouldn't be watered down, and I think that's the big issue here. We expect good stories, good filmmaking, and intellectual property that deserves the big screen treatment. And this should only elevate the multiversal stuff if it's used in the right way. So while The Flash has great moments throughout, it's just too messy across the board and it deserves a lot more focus. Overall, I'm giving The Flash a rating of 6 out of 10. Of course, this is just my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of people will end up enjoying it a lot more than I did, but like I was touching on, I did enjoy parts of the movie, and I thought the individual moments were satisfying. But to those who have seen it already, what was your main reaction after seeing the movie, and do you agree with some of the points that I've raised? Let me know down below in the comment section. For more videos and reviews surrounding the latest theatrical releases, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.